Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the video podcast. Hello Alex. Hello Gabby, how are you? How are you? I'm very hot. It's pretty, yeah, it's, it's pretty hot here. Disgusting, actually. <laughs> oh my god. Well, we had a lot of topics today. We have the education here in Cuba mm-hmm. and the topic. Yeah, that was recorded. Yeah. And we also wanted to talk about the, the food the in Cuba. The food in Cuba. So the traditional one or you would love talking about... Well, we can talk about the traditional to- uh, topics. Oh my God, the traditional uh, dishes and the meals, and about all the all this mix in the Cuban cuisine. I don't know if you okay. if you want to talk about. It. I will love talking about what I think is the national, like traditional uh, food yeah. and what we eat normally, which is completely different. Yeah. So many people come to Cuba and they think that getting ropa vieja or lobster, lobster. or shrimps the, or fish like those kind of dishes are the cuban food exactly the typical food that you can see in the houses and something yeah. like the that. problem or what i think from my experience is that if they go to a restaurant that's what they're gonna get but exactly. if you go to a cuban house you're gonna see something completely different yeah. which is going to be showing you what the real cuban life is for example if you come to my place you probably are gonna get one day egg The second day is going to be chicken, chicken breast. <laughs> or the other day is going to be rice with uh, black beans. And that's it. It depends about the day. So the difference between living the local life and coming to Cuba as a tourist is a very contrasty level of tourism. Yeah. And uh, the same with the food. So it depends about what you want to see, what you want to try. When people say, hey, I want to go to Cuba because I want to try the Cuban food. What are you talking about? Like, what do you mean when you say Cuban food? Local food, like what do we eat? Or what you think Cuba eats? For example, when I was working as a tour guide, we had a food tour. It was a free walking tour. And we took the tourists, like trying the local food, what we get. For example, the Cuban pizza, which is the, the big one, which is not pizza at all. It's like bread with tomato sauce and cheese. That's it. For them, that was not pizza. For us, that's the best pizza you can get. The same, if you go and you try tamales, know, tamales for example, tostones, that's Cuban food. That's local food. But if you get inside of a restaurant, like whatever, any other one, um, that's not going to be probably the, the, the main dish that you will get in a house. What can you tell me about this? Well, actually, it's it's the same. When you are walking through Old Havana and Center Havana streets, you will find tamales, you will find chivirico, you will find uh, I don't know uh, churros. It's a, a traditional from Spain, but are the typical uh, foods that you can get in the street. And when you go to a restaurant, they have like the ropa vieja and lobster. All the tourists came here with the idea of trying lobster, lobster as a Cuban food, as a typical Cuban food. In my house, for example, the lobster, it's not a common dish at all, Mm -hmm. but it's one of the most recognized dishes about Cuba with the ropa vieja and the pork and I don't know what other uh, dish they always want to try. Nowadays, it's chicken. Yeah. Like, it's the the main... Yeah, chicken is the only option. Yeah. And pork is even more expensive. Years ago, it used to be the, the, the beef, but nowadays, it's pork. It's like... It's almost impossible to get. It's very expensive and it's, it's delicious, but it's hard to find. And mm-hmm. what we're getting is chicken. And even here in Cuba, something that they don't know is how hard is finding the food nowadays. It is hard because, for example, and uh, this makes the food even more expensive because it is hard to find. And if you find it, it's going to be expensive for us, for the restaurant. And, um, but yeah, that's overall. It is completely different what you come and you see on the restaurant compared to what you will get in your house and mine, Sarah's house. So that's it for me. Anything else that you could, for example, if let's say that I, that I was a, a tourist and I come to your place and I want to try the Cuban food, what would you give me? Well, maybe uh, asado, let's say chicken and rice, white rice, black beans, mm-hmm. and tomato salad, maybe some juice. That's what you have right now? Yeah. Okay. What else? They say that I want to spend in your house a week. 
And uh, what would you give me, for example? Chicken every day? Mm, not only chicken. You can try also uh, uh, like picadillo. I don't know how to say picadillo. This I, uh, I knew how to say it, but I forgot. Something that you also can try is that, or people don't know, is that in Cuba, many people get hot dogs yeah. as the main course. Hot dogs, eggs, uh, picadillos. I'm going to put here the translation. <laughs> that I don't remember. Tuna. Actually, we have these tuna, uh, little tiny sardinas, cans of tuna. Um, almost everything. Yeah. I would say that Cuban food is very mixed. I mean, for what I, for what I see that people do outside is that they have the, like the meat. They have uh, something to mix, like rice, whatever. I think rice is very Cuban and very Latin American stuff, yeah. but many people don't eat uh, rice. And uh, then they have the dessert, something, salad. But in Cuba, it's like all together. Yeah. And sometimes you mix different meats. Like you have eggs, chicken, and uh, I don't know. And the sweet potato is very common right now. You will find sweet potato in every dish. And some people get uh, smashed potato as main course as well. But the potato right now, it's like... It's expensive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And hard to find as well. And um, what else? Mm, about the desserts, the flan, I don't know flan in English, but the flan, it's a very typical dessert of Cuba. Yeah, and it's the same with the lobster. The flan uh, means having eggs and milk, and it's very hard for the family, for the Cuban families to get it, so the flan is completely gone. When you eat a tom, for example, do you have or do you get an appetizer, the main course, and then the dessert? No, actually in, in the house. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in my house, we have like this main dish. It's the only one. But when you are going to maybe, I don't know, a restaurant or a cafeteria, you have the appetizer, the main dishes, and then the dessert, maybe a coffee. It's very common here to find this coffee uh, after the, the dinner. Mm -hmm. Actually, after the lunch, it's the most common thing. Um, about 12, 2 p.m., you have this cortadito and something like that. But do you know anyone who who eats at home like this, having an appetizer? Or In not? a house, no. no. It's, it's not very, common. It's weird. Yeah, very weird. And I when you know. go outside, tell me one dish that you say, okay, if I go with Jack, for example, and we go for dinner, this is something that I would love trying. In the Cuban dishes? Yeah, yeah. Typical Cuban dishes? Or whatever, or, I mean. Or whatever. Because sometimes we have the spaghetti at home. Yeah. And you go outside and you get a spaghetti one more time. It's like, oh my God, I'm, I'm getting the same that I have in my place. But people do that. What would you get? Well, I love falafel. It's not a Cuban either. It's Spanish. It's from Turkey, I think. Turkey is the new name of Tur uh, Turkey. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because Turkey in English is like a uh, fool, so okay. they changed the name. But I think it's from Turkey. It's uh, made it with beans, and they uh, make like a little mix with these uh, beans and vegetables, and it tastes delicious, and I love it. The kebabs, I love kebabs too. Pizza, it's very common here. Um, I love the... The name in Spanish is bistec de cerdo en cebollado. It's common in the traditional Cuban dish. I don't know. And if you love getting Cuban food, let's say that you had only one option, what would you get every single day? This, uh, this dish that I told you, the bistec de cerdo en cebollado, I don't know how to say this in, in English. So you, you prefer... Pork you with prefer onions. Pork. Yeah. yeah, pork with onions and con gris, the mix of uh, white uh, rice and black beans. It may be a tomato salad. And yuca is like a root. It's a so it's basically the same meal that you will get at the end of the year. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Um, what do you, what do you get at the end of the year? <laughs> you can tell it in Spanish. Puedes decirlo en español. ¿Cuál es tu comida favorita de los platos cubanos? Well, actually, solo, Sebas solo. love this uh, congrees, the mix of the 
We, the same. The same that the we same. we're talking about the same. Pork and con grease is. Mm -hmm. Y si solo tuvieras star. una opción de algo que pudieras comer todos los días, ¿qué sería? Huevo. No te cansas. Y no te cansas. No, no, pero si pudieras escoger. Sí, si pudieras escoger. No, va a pasar lo mismo. Se va a terminar cansando. Así que le dije que puedo. Bueno, Sebas loves porks and eggs. So. Es que es el alimento más completo que existe para mí, por lo que he estudiado. Sebas dice que the egg is the most complete uh, food that he finds. Yeah, and actually, eggs for many people around the world is for only breakfast. Yeah. But in Cuba, we get eggs. For everything. Yeah, almost everything. In all kinds. Like yeah. very and it's not very common here find a breakfast with eggs because people have like the eggs for the lunch or oh, yeah. the dinner. We prefer saving the eggs for lunch. Exactly. They're expensive as well. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the main problem. Um, we also wanted to talk about the education in Cuba. Ready to talk about this? <laughs> yeah. Okay. For those who don't know, guys, Gabby used to be a professor, and uh, well, I'm. Well, she is. I was studying for being a professor. Yeah, but you so are. Now. You love teaching people. You love helping us. And uh, not us, but you love helping people. So what can you talk about this? Let's well, first talk about how the education system works in Cuba. And yeah. then you can go from there. Um, if, for example, I wanted to ask you if you think that studying Cuba has some uh, benefits or not. And uh, another question that I have here for you. Okay, I'm going to start with a little history. You know that I love history. Yeah. After the triumph of the revolution in 1959, the government nationalized all the educational system. So basically, the educational system is operated exclusively by the state. That means that the educational system has an ideological or ideological, I don't know, it's complicated this word, orientation with a Marxist nature, you know, Mars and all Yeah, this. it's all about politics. Yeah, like all that. about politics and something like that. It's entirely state-owned and it's organized through articulated subsystems. You have the preschool from five years, then you have the primary from six to 11 years, then basic secondary from 12 to 14 years, and then the pre-university from 15 to 17 and then the university until you graduated. And you were telling me about this difference between high school. In other countries like the US and Europe, high school eh, is like a mix of the basic secondary and the pre-university here in Cuba. Okay. Here in Cuba it's separated. So we have this basic from 12 to 14 and then the pre-university from 15 to 17 uh, years old. Actually, the educational system here also includes the special education and the adult education. We have like all these programs for the people who have any issue and something like that. And this structure is present throughout the country. So allows the flow and articulation of students to continuously from one level to another and don't get uh, like, too much space between one and another level. It's free studying in Cuba. Yeah, well, it's free the service, but it, this is one of the topics that I want to talk uh, later, because it's free going to the school and receive all the, all the classes mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and the people teaching to you. But actually with all the inflation and all the process here in Cuba, the basics like the I don't know, the pencils, the notebooks, the lunch, um, I don't know, uh, merienda is like a... Snacks. A snacks for the students are very, very expensive. And the transportation here, it's a crazy, it's crazy thing. Yeah. So uh, in recent years, the quality of the education has declined because the inflation. And the professors here have like one of the most... Uh, lower salaries here in Cuba. And it's not a problem in Cuba only, it's around the world. The yeah. professors don't have like a better uh, salary. Maybe you will find a, a footballist with mm -hmm. millions of dollars and then a professor that is uh, teaching generations and teaching the people how to be an architect, how to be a, a doctor. They don't have a good or even a a dignity 
could be the, the word, mm -hmm. the dignity salary. So the, professor, the professors are going and leaving to another better paid areas or they are uh, teaching from their houses. It's an illegal way, but it's the only way to survive with mm -hmm. all this inflation. Yeah, exactly. They are preparing students for all the tests and something like that. They are like, okay, when you are here in Cuba, if you want to go to the university, you have three uh, exams from math, history, and Spanish are the basics. And you have like, and at these exams, when you final this uh, pre-university system with 17, 18 years old, it depends of the of your birthday, of course. Yeah. And you have to, I don't know, approve. It's the you have to approve all these exams with bare, uh, with high no, uh, notes, high. Yeah, yeah. With high notes, and then you can choose the. Oh, you mean pass? Approve, yeah. no pass. Pass okay. is the word. You have to pass all these exams and with very high notes okay. to select the career that you want. Actually, in my case, all the notes that I have were very, very well. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in my case, all the notes that I uh, had were very good notes, but I can't even choose the career that I want. Yeah, that's something very controversial when it comes yeah. to the education in Cuba. You cannot decide what you want to be in your life. They assign a career for you. Yeah. It's like, this is what we need, and you can choose among these Actually, they careers. say to me, when I went to the school looking for the career that I, that I, will, go, that I will be studying now, they say, no, you don't have any career here. You have to go to this place. They say a place, and they have like a re-offer, I don't know in English, re-offer. And you can choose from these options now. And when we arrive to the place, they say, you have to study what the revolution needs. needs. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's completely insane, but it's completely true. So I how do finally... You how do you feel about that? When you, when you heard that? So bad. Feel? Actually, I, at that plane, at that plane, oh my God. <laughs> at that moment, I think that she was joking. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I was like, no, no way. You're kidding me, right? She was like, no, it's serious. I was like, no, no way. Well, I was trying, well, I have tried to be, uh, to get, well, I have tried getting uh, or passing these exams to go to university before. But at the end, I was like, for what, you know? What's going to be my benefit of getting a title for something that I will probably that I would that I wouldn't be like probably working for, because I I don't want to be working for the government because I don't want to get paid. You don't have nothing for sure much. when you graduate from the university. You are like in diapers. You're like, oh my god, mm -hmm. what I'm going to do right now? Yeah. You don't have anything in your hand. And when you're looking for a war uh, job uh, options or something like that, they are like, oh, you need five years of experience. I just graduated yesterday, so what are these five years of experience? I don't have these five years of experience, so you will start from zero. So when you graduate, what do you get? Nothing. They uh, maybe had like a, a job in a government institution that they, you go from a from a to five p.m. and doing nothing. You're like, okay. But you have to work. Yeah. Because you the, need to the pay social back. service. Yeah, exactly. You have like I don't know. Uh, the girls is two years, I think, and the guys that have like all these uh, military service, and I don't know if they have like this. Yeah, if you're going to the military service, which is mandatory in Cuba. Yeah. You have to be working only one year, right? Yeah. Uh, the girls otherwise, is two it's years. going to be two years. I, I mean, you're gonna you're going to the military service only one year, and then you get back to work. Yeah. Otherwise, you well, you uh, study the basic secondary, the pre-university, and when you find final the pre-university, you went to the military service, and then you start the university. Uh, the guys start with a year of difference to the girls. Mm, okay, and uh, once you finish. The, how do you call it? Pre-university? No, I mean. Social service. Yes, when you finish that, 
what do you have to do? You still work in that company? You can still work in, in the in that government institution or you can For the go. minimum wage. It's like Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Three or five thousand pesos which so maybe maybe if you do the, the comparison, uh, the chicken, the package of chicken is like one thousand and five hundred maybe or eight hundred. It's the half of your salary, for example. As a professor. As a professor or uh, the... As a professional in general. Yeah, as a professional in general. So it's complicated. A lot of people uh, go to better paid areas, like I was telling to you. So why people from other countries? And I'm asking you this because I don't know, probably you know this. Why people from other countries, Venezuela, Colombia, uh, China, Korea, Ecuador, Bolivia, mm -hmm. so many countries... Why are they coming to Cuba to study here? They are coming to Cuba to study medicine because it's cheaper. And actually, oh, Cuba okay. is known as, a, and it's true, a, poten a potential uh, medical country. So we have a lot of professionals here. And the educational in, about medicine and something like that are uh, were recognized. It's, it's the word were recognized as very good, so that's why they are coming to Cuba. And Cuba has like all these, uh, I don't know, tratado, convenio. Okay, Look, like they're collaborating. Yeah. So it's all about price. Yeah. Because price. The, the title uh, is going to be the same. I don't know, because medicine and I are not uh, friends <laughs> at all, but the medicine in Cuba is uh, were recognized as very good, so. It's the two things about it. If you had a chance of going back to university, would you do that? No. No? Why? Right now, at this point of my life, I'm doing uh, what I love. Maybe at some point, two years, three years from now, I will uh, come back to the university and study a career that I love. It's the point of this. I want to study something that I feel uh, well and I feel passionate about it. I don't want to study something like, oh, the revolution needs that you study medicine, so you have to study. No, I don't want that. I want to study something that makes me feel motivated every day. Um, once I graduate, I can feel like I'm doing, uh, I'm doing something for the society and for the people. So that's what, why. What do, you, what do your parents think about that? My parents? Uh, the first time when I came to my house and say, okay, the people in the school, in the pre-university school, say that I don't have any career, they were like completely shocking. It was shocking at the first time. I'm a very, uh, I don't know if in English it's resolutive mm -hmm. person, so I put all the ideas in my head and say, okay, I have to... Try to solution, um, uh, look for a solution for this. And the offers that they have, they have like for being a Spanish professor. I say, okay, let's try it. It's not my passion at all. At that moment, I don't even think about being a professor in my life. So I you had no idea about that? No. Well, I had a very, uh, in Spanish, I love Spanish. What you wanted to study? Well, at that moment, when I uh, do the, the request, is a request? Yes. I was searching for a social communication. It's like marketing or something like that. It's the kind of things that I love. And everything with letters. I don't like math at all. Or, I don't know, chemistry. Not my, my area. Mm -hmm. So, social communication, marketing, and photography, cinematography, something like that. That's cool. And let's say that you had the option of, you know, going back. And they say, okay, we have a marketing. There, that's not gonna happen. But let's say <laughs> that they, they say, okay, we have this marketing uh, career. Would you go back? It's a very unreal scenario, so I don't think about it. I'm thinking of right now. I'm doing this, and I love it. So. I can change the, the past. So you, you would say that studying in Cuba is not worth it? 
or it depends about what you want to do. The young people here must come every day are leaving the university. And it's because when you graduate, you have nothing on your hands. And you can see in a lot of cafeterias, bars, restaurants, people that are graduate from chemistry, graduate from um, engineer, medicine, everything. And they are in a, in a bar or in a restaurant. Oh, these uh, kind of words are completely worth it, right? It's not like, okay, you, you are a, a waitress. No, it's not the, the thing that I'm, that I'm telling, but you stay, you stay in the university studying for five or four years for being a professional in something you love, and then you stay in a place that you don't even think about it because it's better paid. It's sad, but... Yeah. Well, that's very sad. Do you want to ask me any question? or Because I don't know what to say about this. I never went to the university. I was a really bad student. <laughs> and I love studying, but I love studying the things that I love. Mm. By myself, mostly. I, I don't like to be like, I'm going to the school. No, no. I suffer too much with the math. And I think, okay, my father, for example, is an engineer. And in all his life, he doesn't use a lot of things that they... Uh, teach in the pre-university, it's like completely uh, inservible, useless. 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 So when I, uh, when I am in a, in a classroom and they are talking about things that I feel like will be useless for me, I'm like, okay, I don't know, I don't like it, uh, this is not, a, you know. If I'm not going to use this, why exactly. I'm going Sorry. to be studying? It's complicated for me. Oh, yeah. How are oh, what? cups of coffee made it in the Linus Pottery's workshop? We made this by ourselves. Actually, yeah. I don't know if you can see here, but uh, I put, I wrote here, I'm currently in, and Gabby, do you well, put something? Well, I don't sign it. It's like the date of oh. 24, May 24th of 2023. So I made this and Gabby made that one and we want to use this to drink some coffee and yeah. do some stuff here. You're going to see these a lot here on the podcast. So it's, it's pretty unique. And the same with this beautiful set, uh, set that we have is from Linus Potter. Thank you, man, for helping us and supporting the, the podcast. We're going to put the link right here if you want to check it out. And if you want to visit Cuba and you want to support a Cuban artist, very I would say a very young entrepreneur, one of the best human beings that I have ever met. This is the guy. We're going to put the link right here. And that's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, David. Thank you, everyone. And see you guys in the next episode. Chao, picado, hueta, picadillo. And don't come to Cuba to study. <laughs>